the fact that plants can have such a profound impact on how we feel about ourselves is, is, is mind-blowing. And I think that's why we will always need them uh, around us uh, for eternity. Hi, I'm Alexander Bond. I'm a biophilic designer, and this is my masterclass. Uh, my mission and what I try and do on a daily basis is to help educate people on the benefits of reconnecting with nature, getting next to plants, getting, getting uh, within the vicinity of plants wherever possible. We're not designed to be in cubicles, we're not designed to be stationary all the time, we are designed to be integrated as well as possible with nature and that's my mission, is to help people reconnect in any possible way that I can. Normally planting is a, is, is a sort of less of a focus of, of what we do and I think that's a mistake because if we design our spaces in a way that planting is seen as, let's say, the protagonist of the space, you will be creating environments which are much more in tune with what you really do need than, let's say, what you think you need. You want to be welcomed by them when you enter your property. This is a welcome that you will not get from chairs or decoration, I would argue. The project I'm most proud of it was a small office project and it was a very, very stark environment. It was quite an inhumane place to be in, I have to admit, and the staff didn't look terribly happy. We worked with the designers to create a much more sort of interesting organic space and plants were the main character in this, in this design process. And the incredible thing is that this is the fastest time it's ever happened. The employees started to name their plants that were next to them very, very quickly. So very, very quickly we had Fred and Susan and, and, you know, and we would get comments about how well Fred and Susan are doing. And that was really, really heartening to see human and plant come together so quickly. It was, it was really impressive. Plants can, uh, of course, touch us emotionally quite, quite simply just by the, the look and feel that they, that they offer. So if we take, for example, the uh, sans verde, it's quite a stark plant and uh, sharp and jagged. So this is not the kind of plant you would use, let's say, in a thinking space or in a, or in a study space, because you want sort of more mellow shapes. You want more sort of interesting colours, perhaps, more vivid colours to really, really sort of bring out the creativity in, in our minds. So I think uh, selecting plants depending on what kind of emotional state you, you want to be in is a very, very interesting question. Create space for plants, much like you create space for pictures, because there's no point in sticking a monstera in the corner. We want to make sure that the positioning of plants takes into consideration where our eyes will be. Plants, as visually impressive as they are, they're very, very tactile as well. And as long as you're not pulling away at them, they, they, they should and could be touched. In fact, you know, that, that, that's one of the enjoyable things about plants, is that you physically can connect with them. And soft leaves are much sort of more conducive to, car to, to, to having a calming effect on us, as opposed to sharp, spiky ones. Of course, there are different kinds of succulents, some of them with uh, nice furry leaves and uh, the, these sort of tactile elements are really, really important. So it's not just how we visually connect with the plants, but also how we physically do it as well. It would be a dream come true to actually have birds and bees and, and, and insects sort of uh, integrated into this space. Uh, to have the sound of water, you know, to have a pond underneath it and to sort of really, really create one of these magical Garden of Eden almost uh, kind of environments where you have a huge vista of these amazing plants with the sound of water trickling and the sight of, of, of life and nature together would be a dream come true. Go out there, get planting, don't be worried about uh, making mistakes, it's a learning process, it's a process between human and plant and the most important thing is to challenge yourself and not worry about uh, if a plant dies because that is a natural thing to happen, we learn from what happens and we improve. <laughs>